Are you comfy? What's cracking? One of the most frustrating things I have ever heard is that happiness is a choice. Why would, if there was a choice, anyone choose to be sad or depressed? It made no sense to me and my favorite YouTuber growing up. That was like their catchphrase and their little saying is that happiness is a choice and choose happiness today and blah, blah, blah. And I hated it so much because I was severely depressed. And why would I choose to be that if I could choose to be happy? You know what I'm saying? It just, it really got on my nerves. And it honestly still bothers me when people say that because We'll get into it. I know I talk a lot about depression and mental health and stuff on my channel, but I'm hoping this video is a little bit different and I hope you like it. I don't know. I'm really excited to make, be making this video, so. Before I get more into it, I wanna say that I am a lot better than I used to be. I'm just not the same person that I used to be anymore and I don't really think anyone really is, but like me especially. I am not in that same depressed place anymore. I still struggle with it, obviously. I don't know if it will ever be completely gone. I do things for myself now. I eat when I need to. I work out, I exercise, I shower, I wash my hair and I do so much more other stuff and I wash my face at night. So I recently started going to therapy. By the time you are watching this, I have been to three sessions and it has already changed my life. I got super lucky because not everyone clicks with the first therapist they go to, which kind of is like a really big discouraging thing to happen. I did click with my first therapist that I went to and I debated on going for a really long time and I finally just pulled the trigger and decided to go because I was not really knowing what else to do. So this is a note for you. If you go to a therapist and you don't like them and they kind of make you feel bad or you don't really click with them, go to a different one. There will be one that is there to help you that you click with. So after my very first session and me getting to know her and her kind of just like getting to, to know me, she handed me a worksheet, which triggered a lot of anxiety and reminded me a lot of school. Even though I graduated in May, what can I say? So she told me to make a timeline of my life, basically go from ages zero to 17, write two memories for each year that I've been alive. Obviously I didn't do like one or two. I don't remember that. I just put like walking and talking or something. So two weeks later, right before my second session, 10 minutes before I was sitting on my desk writing furiously the memories that I could even think of because I have a horrible memory and repressed a lot of years of my life, I feel like, even though I didn't really mean to, they just weren't really the best. And so I just, I don't know. I just don't really remember a lot from some years. Anyways, so I was sitting there. So I'm sitting there, barbecue sauce on my- So I was sitting there writing my memories or trigger words that she liked to call them where she could basically say like, oh, at age 15, blank, tell me that memory. And then I could tell her instead of writing out a whole entire thing. For some examples, age four or maybe even three, the memory I wrote was from being in preschool. I remember sitting on a colorful rug with my brother who was in kindergarten and his friend that always wore a pink shirt. My memory from when I was eight was my second grade teacher telling me that if me and seven other kids could figure out how to split two donuts into eight pieces, then we could share it because we were learning fractions at the time. So as she's kind of going through my memories and stuff and we get to the end, she tells me to kind of think of a memory that I think contributed to maybe part of my depression, my anxiety, just something I never really got to work through or came to like a conclusion to like understand why that really happened or just something that kind of like triggered me when I was younger. And so I did. My mom brought up this memory probably a few months ago and I definitely repressed it because it took me like for her to explain everything that happened for it to finally like click in my head and for me to remember it. And since then I've kind of thought about it a few more times than I should have. She tells me to sit there, close my eyes, uncross my legs and picture me, my 17 year old self going back into this memory from when I was like 10 or 11 and kind of insert myself in that situation and watch it from like my 17 year old self, like a third person point of view. So I try my best. As I'm watching my 11 year old self um, kind of experience the memory that I don't really care to go into detail about, she tells me to kind of take in everything that's happening around the younger girl, watch what's happening to her, what's going on, how is she feeling? Because I'm older than her, I obviously had a better understanding of like how people in the world work that I didn't really know back then. And I feel like as I'm watching her, I kind of see her world crumble around her like it's literally on fire because that's how I felt back then. She told me, my 17 year old self, to take the younger girl somewhere safe. So I did in my head. I took her into my room that I am sitting in now. And then she told me to tell the little girl my timeline. So I did from ages 11 to 17. I told her everything that was on my timeline between then. I told her about the YouTube channel that changed my life in about just a year. I told her about how I move in three years. I told her about the first boy that broke my heart. I told her about the first brand trip that I went on. I told her about getting my license, learning how to drive, getting my first car. And finally, I told her about the relationship I'm in and the concert that I went to just the other day. 
So my therapist was kind of the one reading me my timeline out loud. She was telling it to me and it was kind of like my 17 year old self and my 11 year old self were both listening. And as I'm listening to her reading my timeline, realizing that this little girl was me that I felt bad for because she has just been through something that really stuck with her her whole life that she never really worked through was just hard. But feeling like I was looking at my younger self in the face and just being like, wow, it's okay and you're okay. But like what's happening right now is like not good. And I kind of always felt like that memory was maybe like my fault or I was the one that started it, but looking at it from like an older age and from a third person point of view, I know it's not my fault. So kind of when I think back to that memory, it makes me feel a lot better because I don't think of just that memory. I think of me going to help my younger self into a better and safer situation. That's why I really like doing this exercise, I guess you could call it. Even just going through my own timeline and kind of realizing how far I've come is just, it was just really like a crazy feeling, honestly. So before I even did this, my therapist kind of gave me like a metaphor. So she was talking about a tree and how if you cut a tree and you can see the stem, scientists can kind of tell what has happened to the tree. Even if it's really old, they can say if it got too much water, if it was too dry. Even if the tree is really old, you can just, you can just kind of tell from looking at it what has happened to the tree and just because it happened a long time ago it still affects the tree and that's exactly how it is being a human even if something happened a really long time ago it still affects you to this day i had never thought about it like that because i i've just always been the type of person that just likes to move on i don't like holding grudges i just like to move on and focus on the next thing that happens to me and not really process everything that has happened around me or to me which not that i think you should just sit there and dwell on things but i don't know i'm hoping this makes sense things that happen to you in your past can still affect you even if you don't realize it. But this whole entire experience kind of made me realize that I wish that I could go back to my freshman year self when I was the most depressed I had ever been. I was doing online school at the time, so I was getting like no social interaction and I never did things for myself because for some reason I would tell myself that I don't deserve it. Back to the happiness is the choice thing. I don't think they're trying to say that you can choose to either be happy or be sad, but I think they're trying to say that there are so many things that you can do just to make everything just better. I feel like because inside my mind and my heart and my body was just so fried and going a million miles per hour, I didn't really focus on my environment outside. I didn't turn my lights on ever. I didn't open a window. I didn't light a candle or just do anything for myself. I didn't eat when I needed to. I didn't put lotion on after I shower. My mom would drag me literally by my feet. I don't know how because at the time I was probably like a whole six inches taller than her. She would drag me by my feet out of my bed and force me to go take my dog on a walk because I just wouldn't. I wouldn't exercise. I didn't do anything for myself. I'm sorry, puppy. I take you to do things now. How are you laying like that? That looks so uncomfortable. There are choices that you can make that just make life just a little bit better. And sometimes that's just all you need is just a little bit of something to make everything better. Although you can't choose your freaking mental health state, which I, I don't know, maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe I'm just dumb and everyone kind of already knew this, but it literally just hit me like the other day that like that's what people are saying when they say that happiness is a choice because you obviously don't get to pick your mental health state, but there are choices that you can make to make your life better. If you take anything from this video, I want it to be this. You deserve the best in life. You deserve to feel free from your mind and everything bad and that you can make choices to make your life just a little bit better. And also that you are not alone. There are probably millions of people who feel a similar way to you do and Lord knows I was once one of them and still am at sometimes. So next time you feel like you're literally in a black hole and you, nothing is going right and you can't do anything, do something small to help yourself because it can make the world of a difference. And I really appreciate you guys for watching. I know this video is a little bit different, but I hope you still enjoyed it. Peace out. Say bye, Foof. Why are you so tired? You've done nothing today. All right, peace. Mwah.